college, um, I mean, so many students that have been raised in church, when they get to college, they get a little freedom and they turn against God and they do things that they regret later on. I don't want to see that to happen to anybody here. If you're going to college, and I'm, I'm not just picking on you, Avery, anybody that's going to college, any number of people that we have in our group, I would say the same, that you need to be prepared that it's going to shock. It's a different beast. You're right. It's going to shock you a little bit to see the outrage against God that's in the universities today and how restricted it is to, you know, share the gospel. Now, when I was coming up in, in, in the ministry, I was involved in a couple of campus ministries locally in my community. And once I, I was invited to preach at the, at the event that the Christian, because you were, Christians were allowed to have groups in the college. It was a public college and they were allowed to have a group. And so we, we met there and then there was like a diag or an area within the college where you could, you could have a open forum discussion. So they, they, they had me preach and I was preaching and, um, after I got done preaching, this woman came up to me and she goes, that was really invigorating. <laughs> I never had anybody say that before. Like that was invigorating, but she didn't, you know, she didn't say anything about Christ or, or wanting to get saved or whatever. But I had um, experience in, in college ministry. But if you can find a good group like that, and, a, and there's, I'm sure there are still allowed on campuses. So you could find a Christian group where you can actually get into. It will help you stay grounded in your faith. And, of course, we'll always be here. We're not going away by any means. Yeah, Princeton should. Yeah, so you should be able to find a good group. And, you know, Chi Alpha was the name of the group that I was with. And you might look that up, Chi Alpha. I don't know if they still have. It's been years ago. But anyway, the bottom line is when I start to see and. And the thing is, you know, it's, it's these drastic changes. And, you know, I just, I wrote to her and I just said, you know what? I said, you, you have a problem with what you call evangelical Christianity. And I said, I understand that. I get it. But I said, the word Christian was never, ever a word that came from the, the actual Christian community. Did you know that? It didn't come from the church. It came from the world. It was actually first in Antioch where there were uh, Jewish people that were living in Antioch that didn't like, and Gentiles as well, that didn't like the Christians. The, they called them at that time, they were believers or disciples. They didn't like them. So they came up with this term Christian or Christos, which in the Greek would mean followers of Christ. But it was a slang term. It was in their mind a derogatory term. To be like Christ was a, was a derogatory or a bad thing. So they hurled that at them. Oh, you Christian. Now, the Christians wore, wore that as a badge of honor. They're like, sure, I'm a Christian. You're telling me I'm like Jesus? That's a compliment. That's a, that's a great thing to call me. That's my aspiration is to be like Jesus. So this was something that wasn't, you know. And so I told her that. I said, to just remember the word Christian was worn as a badge of honor in a time when Christians were being murdered and killed. And to be a Christian meant you pledged your head to heaven for Jesus. And they were, they were so willing to die for their faith. And so that's not a bad term. 
Now, people can take a, any term or anything and they can blur it or or cause it to be, you know, what it's not supposed to be by their actions. People, not every person that says they're a Christian is living the Christian life. I mean, we know that. So I just tried to encourage her that, you know, I said, first of all, you can't be agnostic and still have a belief in Jesus Christ. That's, that's a dichotomy. That's like saying, I worship Satan and God at the same time. You, you can't do that. You either are one or the other. And, and to say that you're going to, you know, have some sort of, you're not going to call yourself a Christian anymore. You know, you don't want to be associated with the church. Is a statement that is basically scary to me. Because the Bible says in the last days they'll turn away from the faith. They'll turn away. The word apostatize is in the Greek. Paul talked about this would happen before the coming of Christ. People would apostatize. The word apostasy means to turn away from. And this is what a lot of people do. They turn away. And and so this is scary to me. To see this in somebody that was such, I mean, she wasn't just a nominal Christian. She wasn't just somebody that, she was on fire for Jesus. And she's done a complete 180. And I'm not wanting to harp on her, but she publicly, you know, brought this out on Facebook. And I'm not going to say who it is. But again, my point is, let's pray for this person tonight. I don't just want to talk about her, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be negative on her. I understand she's going through something in her life. But, man, that's a warrior. That's a warrior that went down, and that's not good. Let's lift her up. Father, we lift up our dear friend that has turned in her mind and flipped in some weird way against you lord even though in her words she still thinks that she's a follower of christ even though she's denying that in her words and and, in her intention and we ask god that you will show her the truth that she'll not be deceived that the liar will will have to go the liar will have to release her in jesus name that her mind would not be captured by such lies and hypocrisies paul said to cast down imaginations and strongholds and every thought that rises up against the knowledge of Christ, against the knowledge of the word. And I pray that Christians will be filled with the word of God so they'll have the knowledge to know what's right from wrong. Have discernment, Lord, in this world to be able to figure out when something isn't of God and turn from it. Amen. I'm grateful that in my life when i went to college i was in bible college which is a much better um situation than going to a secular college that's for sure but even in bible college i was involved in my first year there was two scandals that hit the college. There was a, an evangelist, very powerful speaker that was, oh, good. Well, I hope you get your phone and everything back. That would be awesome. We give God the glory for praying for that tonight. But there were two scandals that rocked the campus and one was Rick, this this uh, evangelist rick who was very anointed he would speak on the campus and also off campus and he would hold little you know preaching sessions outside and for everybody and including people off the street would come and listen he is very anointed powerful man of god and then i found out he got caught up in a sexual scandal 
with some other person in the college and it it ended up destroying him and his ministry and his credibility and everything else. And then there was a church that I was attending and I don't know what it was, but I just started getting a feeling about this church that it wasn't right. There was something about it that wasn't right. And I started praying about it and I didn't even know why God had me there. All of my friends were at this other church and they were loving it. And I'm at this church and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with what I was feeling. Like something wasn't right. And God gave me this discernment. And he showed me that the pastor was having an affair with a student. He was married, but he was having a sexual affair with a student that was actually not a Christian, but a, a witch. She was a practicing Wicca witch. And God was very specific about it to me that this was going on. And at first I dismissed it as crazy. Like this is just my mind, my imagination. And then it was about maybe a month or so later that it all came out. And it was exactly exactly what God showed me. The woman was a demon plant into the college to try to do that very thing, try to destroy uh, the work of God. And so that was two scandals in my first year of Bible college. And one of them I was, I, I saw it in the spirit before it happened. And God's worked with me like that my whole Christian life. And I thank God for that. But discernment is something you pray for. God give you God to give you eyes to see and ears to hear what the Spirit says. So that you're not deceived. So that you won't be in situations where you'll be compromised. And every one of us needs to have that discernment. And God will give it to us because he loves us. He wants us to have the truth. But anyway, these things are just like... You know, when I, when I hear things and there's, there's been other people that are turning away from God, people that are in the music industry and different industries of, of Christian, Christendom as it, as it were. But the word Christian doesn't mean what it used to mean. I mean, when they wore it as a badge of honor, that was sacred to them because of they were given their lives, the blood for Christ. They were dying. They were dying. And, and so the word Christian became synonymous with followers of Christ. And now, you know, I mean, I say I'm a Christian. And what does that mean? Well, to some people, they lump all religions under that term Christian. So if you're Catholic, if you're Lutheran, whatever, you're a, a, that's considered Christianity. But there is a vast difference between Catholicism and Protestantism. There's a huge difference. You can't lump them together even. And I'm not, again, I'm not opposed to any Catholics. I, I'm, I've told you before, I believe Catholics can be saved and, and they can have a relationship with Jesus. And I know Catholics that are saved and have a relationship with Jesus. It's not like if you're Catholic, you're automatically cut off from, you know, you're a wicked sinner. It's just, you know, it's not like that. But there is a difference in the doctrine, in the theology, and, and in, the, in the add-ons and additives that Catholics have added on, which I don't agree with. I don't agree with the Pope. I don't think the Pope has ever been, it's not in the New Testament. There's no such thing as a Pope. It's not in any records of, of any writings of Paul or Peter or James or John or any of the disciples. There was leadership in the church, but they weren't, they weren't called popes and there was no papacy. So I don't agree with that order at all. I don't agree with that. I think it's unscriptural. 
but that's again we have to have discernment in what we understand but my point is and getting back to the word christian and what does a christian what does it mean that i'm a christian it doesn't mean that well, my parents went to a Protestant church, so I was born in the, in the house. Therefore, I'm a Protestant. That's how I used to think. That's not it. The word Christian means born of the Spirit of God, a child of God. That's what it means. To be born not in the first time, but in the second time, in the second birth. That means you have to publicly accept, confess, with your mouth the lord jesus and follow him and repent of your sins and believe on him that's a christian that's the beginning of the christian life so it's much different than just a religious thing and that's where you have to separate that up and say all right i'm a christian because i've accepted in in a republic and i've repented of my sins and i publicly acknowledge jesus christ as my lord and savior and when I did that, I was 17 going on 18. And I was, you know, in a situation in my life where I had an encounter with Christ that was so real that it was it changed my life. It transformed my life. And I've had many things in my life like that. But I look at my life and I say, God, I'm not the best example of Christ there is i know i could do better i know i could do more i know i could walk more closer to the lord and even today uh somebody sent me a video on facebook and it shook me it shook me to the core of my being like nothing has sh shaken me in a long time and i posted it in here but if you don't have a Facebook account, um, fortunately, it's a Facebook video. I can't get it on YouTube or anything. I looked for it. I couldn't find it. But if you're on Facebook, you can watch it. But it's And I was going to show it tonight, but then I, I didn't. But it's about a 15-second video of a stadium in Ethiopia. And you see people running and they're singing and, and they're doing an altar call and there's some guy and it sounds like he's singing in French the most beautiful melody a song that was playing in the background and then you see all these people running running to the altar to get saved running to accept Jesus Christ It shook me. And I thought to myself, dear God, these people are so hungry for you. They're running to meet you. I've never seen that. I mean, I've seen some things in my life, but I, I don't know that I've ever seen that. But I thought to myself, in America... We're so, we're, we have it so good, you know. We have, well, we did until Joe Biden ruined it. <laughs> until Joe Biden came along in his, in his cabinet, in his White House. Oh, yeah, we had it pretty good, didn't we? But anyway, long story short, in America, we're kind of a selfish country. We are self-satisfied. We have... You know, religion on every corner. We have all of this. And, you know, in Ethiopia, they don't have that. They don't have food like, you know, we have here. They're, 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 there's still famine in parts of, of Ethiopia. They don't have jobs like we have. They don't have money. They don't have, they're, they're hungry. They're desperate for God. But here in America, we're not like that. When's the last time you went to church and saw people run to an altar to accept Jesus? I would suffer to say probably never. And it put it in perspective for me. It really did. It shook me. And I used to 
believe that way. I used to have that kind of enthusiasm for God where I, I believed for masses of people to get saved. I believed in that kind of ministry. And I have to be honest, that slapped me right across the face. I watched that and I thought, God, we're not doing anything in America hardly for you. And I thought to myself, the reason God doesn't revive America, it's not because God doesn't want to. It's because we don't want it. We don't want it. We're selfish. We're satisfied. We're like Laodicea. We've been, we've been content for so long to just have church, you know, and preach sermons. And we have our hour on Sunday and, and that's it. But you know what? God wants more. Than, he wants to move in this country. And he started to move in me today. That, that video, that 15 second video, it changed me. Something from that spirit of that revival, it, 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 it hit me in such a way that I was all day. I've been stirred to pray. I'm actually, you know, I've, I've had this thing where I've said, almost like I'm preaching down to people and not wanting to offend people or, or, or turn people off. And, and it's like after seeing that video, I'm like, I need to preach up. I need to preach up to people so that they are raised up to God in a greater way and not worry about what people think, not worry about the consequences because we only have one person in our life that we really have to please. At the end of the day, it's God. I mean, yeah, we should work at pleasing our parents. We should work at pleasing our employer or our teachers or whatever. But at the end of the day, the ultimate person <laughs> that you really owe your soul, mind, heart, and everything to is God. And so that you should be concerned what he thinks of you and how he feels of you. And we already know how he does. He says he loves us with an everlasting love. But we have to be also willing to give back that love to him. Now, that's the problem. That's where we lack. And I know it because God showed me that in my own life. Um, and, you know, it's the problem is, is that we live in an America with a culture that, uh, you know, we, we've been spoiled. We've been spoiled as a culture. Now, I said, again, with, with this recession and inflation, you know, we're starting to feel a little bit, you know, the pinch of other countries in the world. And it's, it's, a, it's not, you know, maybe God will use that to stir us up for him. Because that's the problem is that we've been, when you look at that revival in Ethiopia, you look at people running, running in by the thousands across the soccer field to give their lives to Jesus Christ. That does something to you. That shows that God is moving other places in the world in a mighty way. But he's not doing that in America. I don't see that anywhere. Maybe somewhere, but I don't see it. Maybe there is. I don't know. But I don't think if there is, it's happening very much. Why not? Why can't we see soccer fields, stadiums filled for Jesus in America? Why can't we? He's the same God in America that he is in Ethiopia. Well, the difference is they have a hunger that we don't have. They have a determined heart and a, and a desperation for God that we don't have here. That's the, that's the only difference that I could come up with today as I pondered this. I keep seeing that vision in my mind and I'm thinking, the only other time I saw that was in the 80s. When Jimmy Swigert was conducting crusades in Latin America. And he would be in a stadium like that. And there would be 
50,000 people packed in a stadium. And when he would give an altar call, you would see a, just a rush of people coming to accept Jesus Christ. And that, that, was, that was also just thrilling and amazing to see. But I haven't seen it since then. And, and I'm telling you, I'm going to be changing a lot of things in my ministry and in my life. Because God really got a hold of me today and showed me in my own life. And I, I'm not saying about anybody else. I'm not pointing at anybody else. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. But I would point the finger at, at the church in America. Because God is. But I pointed that finger at myself. And I realized, man, I am not. I'm not doing enough for the kingdom. I want to see revival. I want to see God move like that. I want to see people so hungry and thirsty for God that they would run to him to receive him. That's that's pretty awesome. And so, you know, I've been praying for revival. Maybe I didn't even know what revival was. Maybe I just had this idea from books that I've read and things that I've seen. But I when you see it with your own eyes, it affects you. It affects you. It is so in the revival spirit that came off of that 15 second video. It's amazing to me. I saw another video and I mean, I saw a couple videos. One, the other one was a, was a, a girl that was in a wheelchair. And when I first saw it, I thought she was strapped down like, in the chair, but she was moving violently. And then as I started, to, as the video was unfolding, it shows the power of God come on her. And she got up out of the wheelchair. It was like you, it was like a, a wind was blowing around her body. And she got up out of that wheelchair and started walking. And it wasn't fake. I've seen fake stuff. This was real. The violence, I call it violence, but in a good way, not in a bad way. Not like a demon was attacking her, but just the, the utter strength of God that came into her body and lifted her out of that wheelchair. It was, it was intense. I know there's people that don't believe in that anymore, and there's people that are on whatever. I don't care. I believe Jesus can do anything. He did anything in the Gospels. He was he did the impossible. Does he change? Has he ever changed? Does somewhere along the way Jesus changed and no longer does miracles? Well, if anybody can show me that, I'd sure like to find that. Because he said he doesn't change. He says I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> and I know I'm rambling on here. But I really believe that we need to see this dimension of God. Because if it was good enough for the disciples and the apostles, it's good enough for us. That's how they started the church. They started the church in miracles. People being healed, people being delivered. Why does God do that? Why would God heal somebody? Just to show his power over sickness? No. He already had power over every disease and sickness in the world. He does it because he loves. He has compassion on the sick. He has compassion on the diseased, on the demon possessed. He really just loves people. And he wants to heal them. And I don't understand why that's hard for the church in this hour to understand that. God loves people. Now there's been. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> You're good at the scriptures. I appreciate that. Hebrews 13. 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. But you know something? There's been so much arguments in the church over the gifts of the spirit, over healing, whether or not they're still for today. 
Um, you know, all of these things that people argue over and God's just doing them around the world. And so at some point, you know, you have to go, well, if God's still doing it. Then I guess our, our theology has got to line up with what God's doing, because it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible that he gave up <laughs> that aspect of his character. Amen. And I will fish for We need to fish for more people. Amen. Is, amen, Avery. Amen. We need to fish for more people, Avery said. That is exactly what we're going to be doing. Um, we're back on Wire Club, believe it or not. That little site, it still has a lot of people, and there's a lot of people that need Jesus. We're going to go on Rave. Very soon, we're going to be having a chat room again on Rave. I found out they have a desktop app now. They're not just mobile anymore. And I don't know if they have video yet. I haven't researched that, but they have audio. But we're going to start reaching out. We're not going to just, I'm not going to just stay in Discord. Now, Discord is fine. We're using it. It's our platform. It's a stationary place for us to be. But we're not generating a whole lot of, of people, let's face it, from Discord. We are some, and we're getting more people, but I think we can do better. And not, now, my goal is to get them on the Discord platform after, just like on Wire, we're getting people from Wire Club now that are coming over to Discord. Now, the only problem is they're not, they don't seem to be active. So I need to work on that, but... Fortunately, I have access to them on Wire Club, and I can say, hey, you know, why don't you uh, join us for a, a prayer meeting or whatever. The one girl that joined us is from the Philippines, and she's a nurse, and she uses Discord to, to help students. So she's got an access to a lot of people, and she joined our server. So her name is Nurse. If you see her in the server... If you wouldn't mind adding her as a friend and reaching out to her, let's get her on board here. Um, another guy that I know, he's actually, he's um, from California. His name is Butler. And he's a guy that, again, is a good Christian that I can get on here, I believe. And in fact, I was just talking to him the other day. But we're, we're, we're trying to, again, I want you guys to understand that this is a process, right? It's a process. It doesn't happen overnight. And you, you take a couple steps forwards in this, and then you get a couple steps back, and then you just keep going. So you lose some, you win some, some, some you lose. And I'm sorry for that. It happens. It's the nature of the Internet. But you can't pine away at that. You have to move on. You have to, and it's hard for me as a pastor. If I, if somebody is in my group, I feel like they're a part of my church. Now, if they leave and they're going on to brighter places and God, I'm I'm happy for them. But if they're not, if they're just kind of floundering or they're, then I get discouraged because that person is somebody that needs fellowship and whatnot. But anyway, the point is we're working at at this to try to continue but it is the holy spirit <laughs> i like that a fish <laughs> a dog wearing a fish costume that's great you'll see that every day you know what i don't even know if there is or not i guess that would be something we'd have to look into to integrate rave and discord um, I've never seen anything like that, but that doesn't mean it's not out there. I just don't know. If you want to see that video, if you're on Facebook, then all you have to do is I posted a link in the general now. It's probably way gone now. Uh, let's see if I can find it. It might not be that far back. But we get quite a few uh, posts during the day now. So 
which is a good thing. But I don't know if it's still. Let's see if I can find it. Here it is. I found it already. Good, good, good. If anybody wants it, it is right here at this link. That's the thing. If it's on Facebook, then you got to log in and all that. That's why I don't like using Facebook posts. But if you're on Facebook, you can log in and, and see the video. I tried to get it on YouTube, but it wasn't. I think it, I don't even think it's on TikTok. I think it was just somebody took a video with their phone or something like that. And then they uploaded it to their computer and maybe sent it to some site and then somebody else picked up on it and it, it went viral. I think there's 71,000 hits on that video, but it's not, it, it's weird. It's like they uploaded it to Facebook. Did you see it? Isn't that amazing? I mean that I'll, I'll be honest with you. I have not been that sh stirred up for God. It's been a while. <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see people run to God like that. That is just, and I'm sorry if you don't have Facebook and you can't see it. Um, but it's just, there's something about that video that was so much of the Holy Spirit. Like you, you were there and you're feeling that that drawing power of the spirit now i know it happens i have seen never seen that but i've seen similar things to it i remember once we did a youth service and i had invited people to come forwards and there was like that kind of rush but it wasn't running like that. It wasn't running like that, but it was just people kind of coming out of the, out of the pews and they were just kind of like moving quickly to the altar and then kneeling down and just an explosion of the Holy spirit on their lives. But I've seen that, but I haven't seen it <laughs> impact like that. But you know what? It, again, God is moving around the world. He's just not moving in America. America is I'm going to say it. I hate to say it, but it's dead spiritually. Now, there are places where God is moving. Um, Mario Murillo in California. That's something you might be interested in, GW, to look him up. Mario Murillo. He's in California. He's been holding meetings, and they've been having tent meetings, and people are getting saved, filled with the Spirit, healed, and all of that. And it's pretty powerful stuff. And I think you can go on YouTube and watch his videos. There's another guy named Sean something. Sean, he's got long hair. He plays guitar. Ooh, it sounds like me. Except that he's actually got like places that he goes all over America. And he does these. He was in Chicago and they tried to shut him down. He does like he goes into a park with a bunch of Christians and they just start worshiping. And they've had people like give up heroin and throw their drugs down. And they've had, so there's been some movement of the spirit in America. But I believe there's something coming to this country. And I'm going to start prayer meetings like I know I should be doing. And I have a website to do it on. And I'm probably going to do that. And I'm going to put a, 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 well, we already have a video chat, but it, I want a video chat where people could come in at any time, day or night, and pray. I think that would be awesome. And just pray for this nation. We need to pray. If God's going to move, it's going to come through prayer and seeking God. And um, But the Lord showed me a lot of stuff today. I'm really excited about it.
but again, we're not going to abandon what we're doing here. I'm just saying that, you know, additionally. But I want this site to be what it is, an outreach center to reach people for Christ and then to disciple people. That's what we set this up for. And it is set up that way. And we've got people that have said they wanted to know more about Christ. And, well, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be actually coming uh, very soon. We're going to be having a couple courses. I know, right? I know, right? I'm glad you guys saw it. I'm glad you saw it because now you understand what I'm talking about. Well, you don't have Facebook, do you, Avery? It's on Facebook, unfortunately. It's not on YouTube. But I have Facebook. Oh, okay. Well, then you can just click that link. And, and you can watch the video. Okay. It's powerful. We've all been talking about it. And it's like... When you see that, it's just like... Nothing else seems to matter after that. It's like, wow. Okay. These people are serious for God. And it's just, it's, you're getting a glimpse of heaven. That's a glimpse of heaven. Oh, okay, yes. Coming down and touching the earth. Somebody said it the best. They said revival is when heaven kisses the earth. And that's exactly what happened in that moment. It was a God moving by the spirit moment. And uh, anyway, yeah, a big kiss from God. Well, there is a, there is a scripture in Psalms that says something to that effect. And I, I don't remember exactly what scripture that is, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty, <laughs> I, I tell you, that was that was great. I, when I was in college down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, we had we had missionaries that were like giants of the faith that would come and speak. And you would listen to them and you would just be like blown away at, at the stories they would tell of the things that God was doing around the world. And. I mean. So I was kind of spoiled in a way, like, wow, I'm every day I'm hearing these incredible stories from missionaries that are on the field that are ministering to people and, and how, you know, God was working. <laughs> ah, that's so good. So now you know why a fish was always the symbol the icon for Jesus Connect. When we started out, we voted on it at another site, what was going to be our logo. And so we put together a bunch of different ones. And the one that won was the Jesus fish, but it had like, <laughs> it was like psychedelic colors, like purple and red and yellow. I don't know. It was just, it was like almost like something you would see in the 60s. I don't know if you've ever seen the old Jesus Connect icon or not. I'll have to find it. But I did have a Jesus fish. Oh, here it is. I knew it was somewhere. I don't know if you've ever seen this. It's kind of hard to see. <laughs> Jesus connect anyway so that was our icon and the fact that now you guys are doing the fish thing it's kind of funny
Yeah, you don't usually see a, a PDF file pop up. That's why, you know, the symbol of the fish was always associated with the Christians because of that verse where Jesus said, I'll make you fishers of men. That's why exactly. And then they, they were fishermen. So it kind of came out of that whole fishing thing. I think we need to bring back the Jesus Connect fish icon. <laughs> bring it back bring it back or either that or we need to create a new one I wonder if I could find it that would be a lucky thing I got so many photos It'd probably take me an hour yeah I'm not even going to try I need to clean my photos out. I got too many photos. Tuna fish. Oh, that's good. I like tuna fish too.
Dark clouds are gathering Together and together The thing is going to start Again Is gonna start.
One of my old favorites. Love that song. way to make money online that nobody's talking about is something you've never heard of before it's using audibles Banana shark. DW, you could be banana fish. That exists. <laughs> he doesn't want to give him to the peer pressure. Pastor T. Oh no! <laughs> I thought I would join in. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor T. <laughs> Get real. <laughs> Come on, GW. Change your name. Get with the program. <laughs> To what? <laughs> to something fishy, like salmon. Get with the program. <laughs> like salmon or something. Something good, like halibut, salmon, cod, Nemo. Goldfish. Ew. Too basic. It, that's what I said. For me, a fish that exists, it's literary merit. 